Hello everyone, and today I am going to do a movie review on the 2017 movie Phantom Thread by Paul Thomas Anderson. He is probably my outright favourite filmmaker of all time, which is why I am super excited today to do my first ever video review on one of his films. I think I would consider Phantom Thread one of Anderson's lesser known works, as it mightn't be put in the same circle as the likes of There Will Be Blood, Magnolia or Boogie Nights. But I do truly think that this is one of his hidden gems and can be considered to be just as good as the rest of his films. To start off, I'm going to give a brief overview of the movie, introduce the characters, etc, etc. Then I'm going to discuss the characters in further detail and their relationship with one another. And then going to discuss other aspects of the film I like. And then I will finally finish off with my rating of the movie. So without further ado, let's get started. The protagonist of this film is Reynolds Woodcock, played by no other than Daniel Day-Lewis, who is a well-renowned dressmaker in high society London in the 1950s. So the movie starts where Reynolds meets Alma, played by Vicky Krebs, at the restaurant where she works as a waitress. Reynolds is infatuated by Alma and then decides to bring her back to his country house where she models for him in the dresses he has made. The movie then follows the progression of their relationship and how uh, Alma becomes... Reynolds' muse throughout the movie. The supporting character then in this movie is Reynolds' sister, Cyril, played by Leslie Manville. She deals with the logistical and administrative aspects of Reynolds' craft, you know, such as appointments and finding new clients, things like that. She also plays a sort of villainous role in the movie as she has a very cold attitude towards Alma when she first becomes involved with Reynolds, which creates a source of tension for the movie. If we were to take a closer look into the character of Reynolds, on one hand, he is a beloved member within his culture, which can be showcased when he is with his clients. You know, they treat him as if he is some sort of celebrity and he is portrayed to be a very accommodating character. But on the other hand, it's clear that he is a very difficult person to be around. He suffers from some sort of case of OCD and he can let the smallest of inconveniences ruin his day. This is too much movement. It's entirely too much movement at breakfast. As I think you know, Alma, I prefer my asparagus with oil and salt. And knowing this, you have prepared the asparagus with butter. Now, I can imagine in certain circumstances being able to pretend that I like it made this way. But right now, I'm just admiring my own gallantry for eating it the way you've prepared it. His influential nature causes this negativity and frustration to spread towards Alma and Cyril. Alternatively, Alma couldn't be any more different to Reynolds. She comes from a much poorer background and is clearly in awe when she is introduced to Reynolds' world of high society and fashion. But Alma is very strong-willed and independent and unlike the other women in Reynolds' life, has no problem standing up to him when he's being, well, basically... A brat. Her complex relationship with Cyril is probably a result of her not quite adjusting to the high society as quickly or as well as Cyril or Reynolds would have liked. And this takes its toll on Alma as she can be seen in this upcoming scene pretty much making fun of high class society. She has hit her breaking point and she has just kind of had enough of it all. What? All your rules and your walls and your doors and your people and your money and all these clothes and everything. This, this, this game. Everything here. The whole... Pfft. Nothing is normal or natural or... Everything is a game. Yes, mister. No, madam. Yes. Uh, well, if it's my... I don't eat if, this. If, I don't drink if, that. If I don't... it's my life... Cyril is probably the most complex character out of the three. She, at the beginning of the movie, she comes across as a very moody character and is very cold towards every aspect of life, particularly towards Alma. 
but it becomes more and more apparent through the film that it's probably a result of working with her brother for all these years, you know, dealing with flaw, his flaws and peculiarities. It's probably not a job everyone in the world would want, but she uses this attitude, we'll say, with him to kind of, she thinks it's the best way to deal with him and challenge him. I think one of the main reasons that this film stands out more than the rest of his filmography would be down to the visual aesthetics of the movie and the cinematography. His other films depict life in a more dirty, for lack of a better word, and chaotic light. They're usually more violent and generally just darker from a visual standpoint. Some of the camera work in this film portrays its visuals in such a clean and prowess manner that's almost ASMR-like which is a very different approach for Anderson, which enhances this movie's uniqueness and why it might stand out compared to the rest of his films. I think that Phantom Thread thrives in its cinematography and its characters and their dynamic and intricate relationships. Like I said before, Paul Thomas Anderson is one of my favourite filmmakers of all time, and in my opinion, there is no filmmaker better at writing a character than Anderson is, and it just excels. It is exemplified in Phantom Thread. Well, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this review. If you have not seen Phantom Thread, I could not recommend it more. It was nominated for a bunch of Academy Awards, such as Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actress, and a whole bunch of other ones involving like makeup and costume and things like that. So I really do hope you check it out. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And I hope you have a blessed day. Goodbye.